Mm-hmm. Now that we have an understanding of how classes work in Kotlin, let's take a look at how interfaces work. So we'll go back to our source directory, go new, Kotlin file or class. This time in the kind dropdown, we'll select interface. And let's go ahead and call this person info provider. And then we'll hit OK. So now the IDE has created a person info provider.kt file, and it's auto generated this empty person info provider interface for us. Now, like with the class, because the curly braces are empty, we can actually remove those. And this is a completely valid interface within Kotlin. It's empty. There's no methods that can be implemented and there are no properties that can be implemented. However, this could still be used as a marker interface, for example, and other classes could in fact implement this interface. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Let's create a class called basic info provider that implements person info provider. We can actually do that within the same file. We don't need to have one file per class or interface within Kotlin. So to start, we can say class basic info provider. Now we want to indicate that this class is going to implement person info provider. To do that, we we'll use a colon and then we'll type the name of the interface. And just like that, we've now created a new class, basic info provider, that implements person info provider. And because person info provider does not currently have any methods or properties, basic info provider has nothing that it needs to implement. Now let's add a method to our person info provider interface. To do that, we'll come back up to the interface declaration. We'll add back our braces. And now we're going to define a function signature within this interface. Now we don't have to actually implement this. We just have to define the name and the parameters that are required by this method. Now, once we've added this, we'll notice down below now that our basic info provider class has a compiler error saying that it does not implement the required interfaces or add the abstract keyword. So let's take a look at how we can address this issue. To do so, we're going to start off by adding a main function so that we can play around with this class. Now, one of the ways that we could solve the compile issue with basic info provider is by declaring it as an abstract class. This means it doesn't need to implement all the methods available on the interfaces that it includes, but it also can't be instantiated. So if we tried to come down here and say val provider equals basic info provider, we'll get an error saying cannot create an instance of an abstract class. So in this case, we don't want to make this abstract because we do want to work with this class. So we can remove the abstract class keyword. And now we want to actually implement the required methods from person info provider. So to do that, we can start typing print info and the IDE will recognize that. And if we hit enter, it will generate a stubbed out version of that print info method. Now let's take a look at how this was generated. We see that it starts by including the override keyword. This is different than in Java where it was an override annotation. In Kotlin, if you remove the override keyword, it'll actually give you a compile error. In this case saying print info hides member of super type and needs the override modifier. So it's very specific in indicating that you do need to include that override. And then after that, it simply matches the rest of the method declaration from the interface. So here we're now free to define the behavior of this interface however we want. You also see down below that now that we have implemented the interface fully, we can actually create an instance of this class. So if we implement this right for now, just printing out print info, we can come down to our main function. We can type provider dot, and then we can invoke the print info method. And we'll pass in a empty instance of the person class. 
And we'll see here that it executes that print info method. So that's a very simple example of how we can define an interface, define a method on that interface, implement it, and then run it on that implementing class. Let's improve upon the implementation of print info. So here we're going to say basic info provider. And then below that, we're actually going to call the print info method on our person class. So now if we run this, we'll see that we have that basic info provider being printed out and then the info from the person. Now perhaps we want to encapsulate this logic within the interface itself. Maybe this print info method should always generally work in the same way. Well, we could actually move the implementation that we've just defined right here up into our interface. See, in Kotlin, interfaces can provide default implementations of an interface method. So now we can actually remove the implementation of print info from basic info provider and the code will still compile and run. So now if we run this, we're going to get the same output. However, there's an issue with this. We see now in our person info provider interface, we are including the basic info provider string. Well, we probably don't want that since it is an implementation detail of basic info provider. So here we could actually leverage another interesting feature of interfaces in Kotlin. We can provide properties on our interfaces as well as methods. So we'll define a property called provider info of type string. Now you might be tempted to give this a default value, but if you do, you'll see that we actually get a compiler error saying property initializers are not allowed to interfaces. So you will in fact have to override this in any implementing class. But now that we have this provider info string, we could modify our print info default implementation to print out that provider info. So now we've kind of encapsulated this logic into the interface itself. And then the basic info provider class can now just override that provider info property. And we override a property in much the same way as a method. So we'll use override val provider info of type string. And then we have to provide the getter. So in this case, we'll say basic info provider. And now if we run this once again, now we'll see that we are picking up the overridden property value and then still relying on the default implementation of print info in person info provider. And now if we wanted to still override print info, we could absolutely do that. And we could call through to the super implementation if we would like. And then we could print out anything else here. And if we run this one last time, we'll see that we are now relying on the property the default implementation of print info, as well as now our additional logic and the overridden implementation of print info. Next up, let's look at how we can implement multiple interfaces with a single class. To start, we'll add a new interface called session info provider. And then we'll add a method to this called get session ID. And that will return a string. And so now if we come down to basic info provider, we want to make this class implement session info provider as well. Well, all we have to do is to add a comma after the previous interface declaration and now add session info provider as well. And now once we do that, we'll now see basic info provider telling us that we don't implement the required methods. So we can come down here and implement get session ID and we can return some session ID. Now down here on our provider class, we can now see that we can call get session ID on our basic info provider instance. Now's a good time to talk about 
how type checking and type casting work in Kotlin. To do this, we're going to create a new function here called check types, and we're going to take a parameter of type person info provider. Now, let's say that we want to check whether this person info provider is also an instance of a session info provider. How about we go about doing that? Well, we could say if info provider is session info provider, and then we'll print that out. Say is a session info provider, otherwise print ln not a session info provider. And now we will call this check types function and we'll pass in our provider variable. So now if we run this, we'll see is a session info provider printed out to the console. So this conditional was able to determine that the past an info provider was also an instance of a session info provider. Now, if we wanted to flip this logic and check that it is not a session info provider, we can add an exclamation point before that. And then we'll just flip these print statements here. And now, once again, if we run this, we'll see is a session info provider. So you have the flexibility there to check that either way. Now let's take a look at how typecasting works. So within this else block, we've already checked that info provider is a session info provider. So we could cast it and then call methods on it as if it was a session info provider. So we could say info provider as session info provider the as is the keyword used to cast something to another type dot get session ID. So now we're able to cast info provider as that session info provider and call any methods or access any properties on it that are specific to session info provider. Now Kotlin also includes what's known as smart casting, which means that if the compiler can check a type and validate that that type will not change, then you don't need to do any additional casting. So in this case, we've already validated that info provider is a session info provider. So we don't actually need to explicitly recast this. We could say info provider dot get session info and the compiler is performing a smart cast for us. So here we can access get session ID or other properties and methods on the session info provider without having to explicitly cast it each time.